G'day everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max and today I'm joined by Flynn and we've got some cool topics today. Uh, I went to the CrowdStrike conference uh, on the 21st of May and that was pretty good. We've also got another data breach continuing from last week's topic of multiple data breaches. There's a MediSecure data breach which is a, um, a company that's linked to uh, medical providers and we've also got chat GPT 4.0, which is a um, a new iteration of OpenAI's ChatGPT. Flynn, why don't we start off with MediSecure and talk a little bit about that one? Yeah, so as you said last week, there was a couple of different breaches that doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Um, at the moment, it seems like we don't know a whole lot about it. It was actually quite cryptic the way it came out. MediSecure didn't actually make a statement on themselves, which is a pretty bad look. Um, basically, the OAIC, um, I believe it was the OAIC, made a statement initially saying, like, uh, there's been a massive breach with a health provider, uh, ongoing ransomware attack, uh, and then nothing was said for a bit, and then a couple hours later it was revealed that it was MediSecure. So it's still an ongoing... I don't know if the ransomware has been removed from their systems. We haven't really gotten any updates. We just know something has happened. It was submitted through the notifiable data breach scheme yeah um but yeah the the way that it was phrased by the oaic makes it sound like it could be a pretty big deal um we continue to see that you know health providers are just such a massive target for cyber attacks particularly ransomware because of how uh, valuable phi data is um and it doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon yeah, 100%. The Department of Home Affairs made a statement saying that a MediSecure database containing the personal and limited health information of individuals relating to prescriptions as well as healthcare provider information has been affected by this cybersecurity incident. So, it, yeah, it sounds like out of the data they've lost, it could be, yeah, fairly sensitive, which is interesting. You did bring up just before the podcast, Flynn, as well, it's an interesting one having that the healthcare provider information has been lost as well. Yeah, definitely. So with that being breached, it's something that we may not see the effects of immediately. It's something that if it's, it depends on what the information is, it's quite cryptic with how they've said it. But if that's sensitive information that could you know, lead to a further breach down the line, that's potentially really, really bad. Um, I think as far as we know, they also said that it's a third party um breach so a supply chain attack as we know that's so common um they haven't released who was the third party so who knows if that's actually the case or not yeah um but yeah it's something that we may not feel the effects of immediately yeah it's hard to know what the extent of what is happening right now is and we'll update when we do get any um information about that yep. but um for the meantime you know, do your regular due diligence with um with fraud stuff. As soon as you know your suspected fraud is going on, go to ID care. That's a massive thing. It's something that actually a lot of like when you talk to the police and stuff like that, they don't mention that ID care is a thing in Australia. Um, if you are facing identity fraud, go immediately to ID care. They will help you out a lot and with um, you know, basically getting new stuff, help uh, helping you get like a new driver's license and whatnot. Um, and yeah your due diligence be careful yeah no i uh, totally agree there was a new iteration of uh open ai's chat gpt that was revealed over the um, last week or so as well um really interesting stuff uh, we're seeing a lot of new um ai uh models coming to you know the public's uh space now which is cool so llama 3 came out a couple months back and then we're also now seeing ChatGPT 4.0, I believe they're calling it, or 4. Yeah, it's interesting seeing so many different models as well because I feel like they're a bit of a mixed bag. I'm looking at one of them on my desktop, the Copilot stuff. I don't know if you've messed around with it, but it feels quite underwhelming, <laughs> um, to say the least. Yeah, no uh, but G <laughs> yeah, GPT 4, um, it's seeming uh, pretty pretty crazy. Not all of it is out currently. Uh, once the the video and the image, uh, I'm not sure if it was image, it was mostly video stuff. And also, 
there may have been some text to speech stuff. I'm not a hundred percent sure. No, uh, so what was so what it is is if you're a free uh, tier user of OpenAI's ChatGPT, then you're going to have access to ChatGPT four, uh, GPT four, uh, which is an upgrade from before. It was GPT three point five, which uh, what we were using before. Now it's you've been upgraded to four, and each free user actually has a limited but an, an amount of allocated uh, trial prompts which they can use for analyzing images uh, or analyzing audio I believe so you can do text sorry speech to text at the moment what the massive sort of uh, interesting bits of GPT 4.0 is is mainly the speech to speech seems really impressive like miles ahead of anyone else in the in the industry uh, it sounds really fluid if anyone hasn't seen the demo it's super fluid it sounds pretty realistic it has you know a bit of sarcasm a bit of wit a bit of humor in the way it responds to you um and it's it's very fast as well uh, OpenAI have come out and said as well as uh analyzing video i believe was something that it was it was able to do or, or also generating video too so yeah uh, there's some pretty interesting kind of developments going on there but um yeah yeah the the generating video thing is going to be very very scary when that becomes a more publicly available thing yeah um which uh, i think we said it in the past but it's a little bit more reassuring that a lot of even non-cyber people seem to see that this is an issue and this is potentially dangerous yeah um but you know what can you do open ai has shown that they're pretty like ahead of the game and the jumps in ai just don't even seem to be slowing down anytime soon and um who knows where we're going to be in five years' time. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, there's also, I just wanted to bring up something. So I went to the CrowdStrike uh, Sydney conference, um, Crowd Tour is the name of it, on uh, Tuesday the 21st of May. And I, I thought it was quite a good conference. It was good for networking. And there were a few really great standout speeches as well that were there, some keynotes. One by Jana. Jana or Jana. Um, hers was on threat hunting and advanced persistent threats. Specifically, I, I think it was, um, yeah, so it was called S Scattered Spider. So it was a pretty interesting um, case study and really uh, the way that Jana presented it was really excellent. So yeah, shout out to her. I do just want to bring up though, and CrowdStrike generally do a really good job at their conferences. There was a bit, something that I noticed was Every single keynote, every single one, they all brought up uh, generative AI, which is, you know, fair enough to bring it up. But then they also would go on about a 15 to 20 minute spiel about what generative AI is and, you know, the ramifications of it and how, you know, different it is. And they would go on for 20 minutes to explain it for every single speech that there was. And, you know, it might be fair enough to, to give a little bit of an overview but by the end of the day, I literally heard the exact same thing on generative AI about four or five different times before that. And they even acknowledged it as well. So they would say, in some of the speeches, they would say, oh, you know, obviously the buzzword at the moment is generative AI and you've all heard about it. And then they would go on to talk about it for 10 minutes. So um, I think yeah, it, yeah. It, it's a good kind of reminder when you're uh, looking to do a, a speech at a conference or... Uh, have a keynote um while it's awesome to bring up the brand new things in security or in the tech sphere at the time maybe it's also good to be aware that everyone else might be bringing up the same exact same thing and uh you know everyone who is at crowd strike crowd tour probably has an understanding a little bit of um of generative ai considering we're most of the people that would work in tech and it, it doesn't really make sense to yeah talk about it for 25 minutes every single keynote yeah I, that was a problem i've seen in the past as well i won't name the specific conference but there was one that i went to that was the title was something like you know it's the blessings and the downfalls of ai or something like that so it made it sound like it was going to be you know an actual comparative presentation talking about the different benefits and the thing but we went there and it was just you know a day one description of what chat gpt is um i think we're past the point of 
you know, saying, oh, chat GPT can be a great tool that, you know, it can help give you different information. Like we're kind of past that point. Um, well, we're kind of past explaining what generative AI is, I believe. I think my point that I was trying to make is, yeah, we're past explaining what generative AI is, yeah. at least at technology conferences. We know what it yeah. is. Instead of explaining it every time, you can just mention this uses generative AI. This is how it does that. Great. But uh, we probably don't need a whole sort of backstory on it. Yeah. And of course, it depends on your audience as well. Like if you're doing training to, you know, a particular subgroup of staff, it might be more valuable to actually explain what it is. But yeah, as you said, if you're at a tech conference for CrowdStrike, um, it's probably not necessary. I don't think so. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.